if I if I didn't know any better, I'd say that this was sweetened. Welcome back to Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Today we've not really got a whiskey review. I mean, it is technically a review, but it's not whiskey. It's new make the sp uh, spirit from Rosebank. Uh, I've already opened it and poured it just to let it kind of open up a bit. I haven't smelled it or anything like that other than what I can smell from here. Um, so I've not experienced it as of yet. Uh, I believe it was £23. I've only just picked it up like, I don't know, an hour ago, two hours ago or something. And I can't even remember the price. I'm just terrible. But I'm sure it was about £23. Uh, this little card or little leaflet thing comes on it. Uh, it, it comes like that. It's got a little uh, plastic seal. Uh, with the, the rose petals, the floral uh, printing on it uh, to go in line with the, the style of the bottle. Uh, quite a dainty little bottle, 63.5% ABV as well. So it has been reduced for bottling. I believe Rose Bank uh, spirit comes off the stills about 75%, if not higher. Uh, inside this little pamphlet for your uh, information is a, a QR code. And if you scan that QR code, you get, uh, I believe, recipes and ideas for cocktails, uh, which is means nothing to me. <laughs> uh, I will not be putting that in cocktails. Uh, I don't like putting malt in cocktails. Maybe some blend, Monkey Shoulders, even a push, because I think Monkey Shoulders is a good whiskey in its own. Uh, I tend to put malt, the malt that I don't like as much, into cocktails, because then it brings it up and then it gives you a good use for a, a, a subpar malt. Uh, and I've done that plenty of time. But yeah, I think they're trying to push the cocktails and this kind of new way of drinking whiskey uh, onto people so that it, it brings more people into drinking whiskey. It gets a broader audience into it uh, because uh, it's always been known as a, a kind of old man's drink or whatever you like. Uh, even though I started drinking it when I was like 18 or 19. But I think it's always got that persona. Uh, it's not my way of drinking whiskey. I think it's a bit daft putting in cocktails, especially good whiskey. Uh, people might try and argue against it, but I think they're wrong. <laughs> and I will uh, stick to my guns on that one. So yeah, you can drink it the way you want it uh, too, but I'm definitely not drinking that uh, in a cocktail, especially not new make. I've never heard anything of the like. Uh, you seen this, look, Charlie, look, what's this? So yeah, uh, I visited Rosebank just not that long ago. Uh, I didn't go for a tour or anything. I'm hoping to get a tour at some point. I went after the gym, uh, just wanted to pop in and I also wanted just to buy the new make. I wanted to see what it was like. Uh, you've got three different tours for Rosebank. You've got the Rosebank uh, Reawakening, which is the basic tour at £25. You get Tamdu 12 year old and Glen Goyen 12 year old. You've got the Rosebank Rekindled tour, which is Tamdu 15, Glen Goyne 15, and Rosebank 31 year old, and that'll set you back £95. And then you've got the premium tour, which is Rosebank, um, oh, I can't remember the name now. Rosebank, let's say executive. <laughs> uh, Rosebank Reserve, that's what it is. Rosebank Reserve, which is £300, and you get three uh, old Rosebanks, like 31 year old, 30 year old, and all that. So you get to try that. I'd be going for the £95 one uh, because I think if you're going to visit Rosebank and do a tour, you should be getting Rosebank whiskey. £95 for a tour is obviously a little bit expensive, but you are getting a 31 year old Rosebank that's supposed to cost about two grand or three grand. I can't remember the actual price. Um, so yeah, you get Tamdu 15 and Glengoyne 15, which I'm pretty sure I've had before, but it'd be worth it, I feel, for the tour and also to experience the old uh, Rosebank. So, Rosebank itself, um, there's a bit of kind of discussion and debate whether it was originally uh, opened in 1792, uh, because there was a couple distilleries around about that time that were open, uh, one that was like a Falkirk distillery that they believe Rosebank, another Rosebank got built on and that might have been the same one. Uh, so it's all a bit confusing, uh, confusing with the paper trail to actually figure out when it was. But I think 1792, uh, sorry, 1798 is the uh, official statement when it opened. Uh, it was, a, I believe, originally called the Camelon Distillery as Rosebank does sit on the uh, the Camelon Edge. Um, it is in Camelon. So yeah, it was called Camelon Distillery and then later it got renamed to Rosebank Distillery. Uh, it was mothballed in 1993, I think 2002, sorry I'm just watching the cat, he's up on the counter, I'm going to have to bring him down. 
1993 uh, was when the distillery was mothballed. Uh, I think it took up to about 2002 to completely uh, mothball it. But that was two years before I was born, so I've only ever known Rosebank uh, as a kind of derelict building with nothing going on. The warehouses, Dunnage warehouses, where they used to store all their casks. I've always known it as the Beef Eater, which I believe is a travel lodge or like a premier in it's those affordable uh, hotel overnight stay places. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've always known it as that, which is a little bit of a disappointment. So when I walked into the revitalised Rosebank, the reawakened uh, visitor centre, I did have a smile on my face uh, and it's quite uh, hopeful to hope that, <laughs> spring, uh, that, that Rosebank, I was about to say Springbank, uh, that Rosebank will bring some tourism and some money into Falkirk, which can always be, will always be good. Um, I thought the layout was pretty cool inside the shop, and then Bart mentioned that it looked like a typical airport setup, uh, which reflecting back on it, it, it kind of does. Um, but yeah, I, I still enjoyed like, the, the brief visit that I had to pick this up, uh, and I definitely had a smile on my face to think that I'm standing somewhere, uh, yeah, I don't know, it was a bit romantic, <laughs> uh, which is a bit sad. But anyway, we'll get down to the new make, uh, I don't think there's any notes in here or anything. Uh, it just says revered for its light floral character. The first revival cereal-led ex cereal expression has hints of sweet apple and sharp citrus. Beautifully balanced with deeper earthy notes. Um, so yeah, 63.5%. We'll see what we get on the nose. Yeah, I think cereal's right. Um, I do enjoy new mate. I think a lot of people do, like the smell of it. I think the taste of it can be a bit... Uh, of a, a hit or miss, uh, it's not always great, some people hate it, some people love it, a bit like Marmite, uh, but I feel like everybody likes the smell of new make at least. I had this before with, uh, I think it was Dornux new make, where I felt like it was a bit milky, um, but I feel like that is the same with this, like a bit of like cereal that's just been left in milk. I mean, what else do you have cereal with? But. So I know some like absolute maniacs have it dry, but uh, yeah. It is fruity, it is floral, but it's it's strong. <laughs> it's burning the nose hairs, it's singeing them off. Um, yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of water in it as well just to see how that, that changes it. That's all I'm really getting. It is definitely cereal. It it's so cereal lead. I didn't want to uh, just be basically copying the notes or regurgitating the notes but it, they've said cereal lead and it is, uh, uh, there's no denying that. There's like a, I'm trying to think what it is, it's like Horlicks. Uh, if you ever make Horlicks, the, the kind of nighttime, what is that, is that like a malted, is that like a barley drink or a malted drink or a malt drink or something? If you ever make that with like with like milk on the hob, uh, and you put it into the Horlicks powder and you you, you spit, stir it up, that is what I'm smelling, and it is hot. <laughs> uh, the palate on this one without the water. Mm. Yeah, it needs it needs water just to tame it a little, but it's so, it is light, other than the, it's not spicy from the a flavour, it's, it's definitely the alcohol, but it is very light, once again, uh, I'm getting like Rice Krispies on the palate and kind of in the finish a little bit, I add a, a decent about, a bit of water to this, uh, I'll try and do it slow because I'm sure it was uh, Phil Thompson from the Thompson Bros that uh, said if you, you kind of rush adding water, you can you can ruin it, get a kind of milk, uh, was it milky or was it soapy? You can make it soapy. Um, so I'll try and add this water a little slower uh, and, and see what happens. But so far, like as new make as new make goes, uh, it's good. Uh, is that an indicator of what the whiskey's going to be like? I suppose. I mean, that's surely what master blenders, master distillers use. Uh, they. This is what they do. <laughs> they smell it and decide, yeah, this is this is how I want it to be, and then they put it in a cask. So if this is going into a cask, then I'm sure it'll be I'm sure it'll be lovely on the other end. I hope. It just depends what they do in between, um, with regards to chill filtering and all that good stuff and the the cask selection. I mean this. 
I mean, this is only the beginning. Um, not much change on the nose, still punchy. I'm going to keep adding water, <laughs> keep stripping it back. Maybe I should have saved some of my, my Rosebank um, knowledge or Rosebank insight for later uh, when I was adding the water. So I had something to talk about instead of just blabbering on. Uh, but yeah, let's see. I feel like I've tamed it more now. I'm getting quite a, a quite a vegetal. Yeah, quite vegetable. Uh, I feel like cauliflower for some reason. Look, come up here. The the palate. One thing I will say is mental <laughs> how sweet it is. If I if I, I had rum the other day, uh, <laughs> sorry to go off on a tangent, but I could have sworn there was sugar in it and there wasn't any sugar in it. And it's the same with this. This this feels it, it, if if I if I didn't know any better I'd say that this was sweet in it. It's so sweet. It's it's surprising. Uh, and I don't know if it's like a sweetener. I'm quite sensitive to sweetener and my missy says it. <laughs> uh, like if I ever have juice uh, or like sparkling water or something or, or diluting juice or yogurts or anything and there's sweetener in it, I've got quite a sensitive palate to it and I can taste it straight away and I get that, that in the side of my tongue where it like draws it in and it's a little chemically, uh, it's hard to describe but I'm almost getting that with this. It's like an art artificial sweet. Mm. Hey man, yeah. I would hope not. <laughs> I mean, I doubt the body sweetener, but it feels like they're sweetener than that. Anyway, I, pff, there, there can be. There's surely not. Um, but that's what I'm tasting. Uh, and if, if if I was like a, which I am normally, if I was so cynical, I would say that they've added sweetener in this to make it taste better, but. Uh, who knows? Hopefully not. Yeah, the the finish. I, I mean, there's not much new make. I don't really get. I don't really get finishes on new make. I just get like a a, a long heated. Uh, would I say alcoholic? Maybe. I mean, it's mental because I always assume that cream a creaminess comes from the cask, like the bourbon or that. But it does feel a little creamy in there. Um, like I said, a little milky, it does feel a little creamy, a little full. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying this. I, 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 I've got nothing bad to say about this other than my suspect of sweetener added, but I, I doubt it. it. It can't be. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I think if this is the direction they're going with their spirit, uh, then ho hopefully on the, out on the other side, once it goes through the casks, once it goes through all that process, meticulous process, that it comes out for the better and that we can enjoy it at a reasonable price as well because like I say I've, I've enjoyed this I've, I've not really got any quarrels with it um, and it is only new make it, it it's it, it's hard to de determine where it's going to go where they're going to go in the future I think pricing's my pricing's my biggest worry with distilleries like this because they can almost just have a blank checkbook uh, because they've been mothballed and because it's got this the sense of um, wanting or, or unknown about it. Not unknown, but well, unknown for many. Um, a sense of kind of desire to grab bottles um, because it's been been offline for so long. But we'll, we'll see. We, we don't know what the future holds and that's just been being a little bit cynical. But as, as a present, I'm glad I brought this, bought this. Um, will, will I continue to drink it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that'd be pretty stupid. I was just thinking like, when am I going to drink this? But I'll just drink it like I'm drinking whiskey anyway. Uh, just pour a little bit of it, have some water, spend some time with it. Uh, the dog and the cat are playing. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's all I've got to say. Uh, hopefully you got some value out of this. <laughs> uh, first look at Springbank. Uh, Springbank, did I say that again? First look at, at Rosebank. So yeah, uh, I've been sure. This has been Whiskey Wims. I'll see you later.